In this video, we're going to look at the distance formula. We use the distance formula to find the distance between two given points, or if you like, the length of a line segment. We can write the distance formula now as d is equal to the square root of x1 minus x2, all squared, plus y1 minus y2, all squared. This looks quite confusing. It's simply now Pythagoras' theorem. So let's have a look at this now on a grid. If I choose two points, and I'll go for this point right here, so that point we will call A, and A has the coordinates 2, 1. And then I chose B, let's go here, so B has the coordinates now 6, 4. If I wanted to find the length of the line segment AB, and I didn't know the distance formula, I could use Pythagoras' theorem. So if we just make a little right angle triangle, that length there is 4, that length there is going to be 3, and we want this length right here, which is the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle. So if we just consider now, this length we can see is 4 units, that's 6 minus 2. This length is 3 units, that's 4 minus 1. So we can write 4 and 3. So using Pythagoras, we can now say that AB is going to be the square root of 4. 4 squared plus 3 squared, that's going to give me now 5. This is one of our triples. Okay, if we actually look at this, what we can do is write to the side now that AB, the length AB, is going to be the square root. Just considering now, what we've got is 6, that's the, the first x coordinate, minus 2, which we need to square plus the y coordinate difference, which is 4 minus 1, which we need to square. That's going to give me now the square root of 4 squared, plus now 3 squared, so the square root of 25. Taking the positive value, 5 as its a length, we have 5 as our answer. I could have done 2 minus 6 and 1 minus 4. Those would have given us two negative numbers. When we square a negative number, we get a positive number. So as you can see, Pythagoras' theorem works quite nicely for this. Clearly, we wouldn't use this particular approach now in terms of the graphical method when the numbers are messy. So, for example, negative fractional numbers. OK, find the distance between the two given points, leaving your answer in exact form where appropriate. So if we just consider now the following, the distance on the first one is going to be the change in the x-coordinates. So this one is going to be 5 minus 1, which we need to square, plus now 6 minus 3, which we need to square. So this is the square root of 4 squared plus 3 squared. That's going to give us now the square root of 25 and exactly the same length as we had before, just now with different coordinates. So that is 5. If we look at this one, I'm going to do now that the distance between these two points is going to be 10. Then we're going to have 10 minus the 4. I'm going to, let's just put that in, 10 minus the 4, which we need to square, plus now the 9 minus the 1, which we need to square. So the distance is going to be equal to that 6 squared, that's 8 squared, so we're going to have on here, now the distance is going to be the square root now of 36 plus 64. The distance is going to be the square root of 100, and the distance is going to be 10. So all I've done is sub those in. We could have done 4 minus 10, all squared, 1 minus 9, all squared, would have given us the same answers. Okay, let's look at this one right here. This one now is negative 1, negative 4, and the origin. So the distance is going to be the square root now of negative 1. And we wouldn't really have to do this. We could just go ahead and leave these zeros out. Plus now negative 4, then we're going to subtract the 0 and square it. So the distance is going to be the square root of 1 squared, which is 1, plus now 4 squared. Negative 4 squared is the same as 4 squared. So that is going to give us now an exact answer of root 17. I'm not going to write a decimal approximation. We're asked for exact form. A third is exact form. Okay, let's go ahead with this one. So the distance is going to be equal to the square root of now 1 subtract negative 1. So 1 subtract negative 1, which we need to square. 
then we're going to get now plus, we're going to have again, one minus now for negative one, which we need to square. So the distance is going to be equal now. This is going to give me two, two squared is four, plus four. Distance is going to give me root eight. So simplifying this as now a simplified third, two root two. Okay, let's do the last one. We've got now five, uh, five, three and five, seven. Okay, this is interesting. Now, if you think about this, do we need to use a distance formula on it? If we consider now the x corner to both of these is five. So what we'll do is just put this on. So what we've got then is the following. So this point, x is gonna be five. So let's do five, three. And x is gonna be five again and do five, seven. So we can see this is part now of a straight line, but it's a vertical line, but it's got a distance of four. So I'm just gonna write four. Do I need to use the distance formula? No, hopefully I've got some um, concept that that is going to be now a vertical line. But if I didn't, let's go ahead and show that the distance between those two points. We'll do five now, uh, five minus five, that's for changing the x coordinate squared, and then we're gonna do now seven minus three squared. This is gonna give me now the square root of zero plus four squared, which is gonna give me now the square root of four squared, which of course is gonna give me four. Uh, so yeah, we can see that distance formula works, but that now is what we have. Okay, let's move on. Um, and we'll look at some questions. Okay, this is a, a question in, in sort of an application of it. Given the distance between the points p comma three and four comma one is two root five, find the possible values of p. Okay, so let's write this out. The distance is two root five, and that will be equal to the square root of the following. So what we're gonna have then is this, p minus four, so p minus four, that is the change in the x coordinates squared, plus now three minus one squared. At this stage, I'm going to square both sides. If I square this number and I write it step by step, that's gonna give me four and that's gonna give me five. You can just go ahead and write that now as 20. This is gonna give me p minus four, all squared, and then we're gonna have plus three minus one is two. That's going to give me now on here, we're gonna have four. 20 minus four is gonna be 16, and we have a quadratic in P. You can expand the brackets. I'm simply gonna square root both sides. Square root of 16 is plus or minus four, and that is equal to P minus four. So we can see on here now, if I do this, what I've got is P is equal to plus or minus four. So we could have now P is going to be equal to eight or P is gonna be equal to zero. So they are the two values of P. So if P minus four was equal to negative four, P is gonna be equal to zero. If P minus four is equal to positive four, P would be equal to eight. So let's go ahead and just check those. So if we have those in now, if we had naught comma three, and then we had four comma one, if we wanted to find the distance between these, it would be the square root of four minus zero squared, which is four squared. Then one minus two, uh, sorry, one minus three, which is minus two squared, which is gonna give us two squared. 16 plus now four, that's gonna give us root 20. So root 20 uh, is, can be written as two root five. And then again with eight, if we had now, this one was eight, so we had eight comma three and four comma one, we'd have exactly the same scenario. Eight minus four is gonna be four. So we'd have four squared and then three minus one is two plus two squared. 16 plus four is equal to now uh, the root of 20 if we wrote it like that, which again, we can write as two root five. Okay, let's look at uh, another one. So this one, the distance between the points 10 comma Q and Q comma 12 is 10. Find the possible values of Q. So one, now we've got uh, the distance is 10, so I'm gonna write 10. Now we could write 100, I could write the distance squared. I'm gonna write this now as the square root of the following. 
we're going to have on here 10 minus q all squared. That's the difference in the x's. Plus now the q minus 12. That's the difference in the y's. And we need to square those. So this is going to be a bit messy. It's going to give us a quadratic equation in q. But we can go ahead and do that. So squaring both sides, we're going to have 100. Then I'm going to expand the brackets. So that's going to give me 100 minus 20q plus q squared. Expanding this one, plus another q squared minus 24q. Then we're going to have plus 144. The hundreds are going to cancel. So 0 is going to be equal to 2q squared. Then we're going to have minus 44q plus 144, dividing by 2q squared minus 22q plus 72 is equal to 0. Uh, 4 times 18, I think this is going to factor, q minus 4 multiplied by q minus 18. 4 times 18 is 72. That looks good. So we can say on here that Q is equal to 4 or Q is equal to 18. Uh, I would check those just to make sure that they um, hold true. So for example, if we just substituted this in. Uh, so if I put in now Q is 18, that would give us now negative, uh, what would we get on there? Negative 8 uh, squared let's have a go at that negative 8 squared which is going to give me 64 and then that's going to give me now 36 uh, so that's going to work um, that's just subbing in the 18 uh, that's negative 8 negative 8 squared 64 6 18 minus 12 is 6 6 squared add those together square root and that's 10 um, if we tried q is equal to 4 10 minus uh, the 4 is 6 6 squared is 36 and then that's going to give us negative 8 squared. Negative 8 squared is 64. And again, when we add those together and square root, we're going to get 10. So Q is 4 or Q is 18. So that's the distance formula, which allows us to find the distance between two given points, or if you like, the length of a line segment. It's basic Pythagoras.